I'm Cynthia James, and this network is about changing lives one woman at a time. Hello and welcome to Women Awakening. I'm your host, Cynthia James, and I get the privilege of introducing you to extraordinary women. Women that inspire me, women that have taken charge of their lives, women who want to make a difference on this planet and have found ways to bring their creativity and their brilliance. What I want you to know is that they're not exceptions, they're way shores. And so they are telling us that there's a field of infinite possibilities where we can step in and get attuned to why we're here on this planet and unleash the purpose that lives within us. So this is exciting for me. I do this every week, and I introduce you to a new woman, and I invite you to listen to what they have to say and see how it resonates with you and what you can do with it. We are wherever you can get, you know, podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, iHeart, Spreaker, Amazon, YouTube video. Sign up, come back every week and meet an extraordinary woman. So I I have a new person to introduce you to. Her name is Hannah Alonzo. She's an integrative healing expert. And her key focus is, is healing as a system of total life and business transformation and ever-increasing expansion. She is the creator of Integrative Healing, a multi-modality and dimensional approach to self-healing and self-mastery. Also, the CEO, founder of the School of Integrative Healing. The school is a long-term approach to true holistic transformation. And these healing practices are a large part of Hannah's life work and the essence of all of her teachings. I love what she says here. She's a believer, a firm believer in having fun while doing the personal and business work. And she believes that you can have it all, wealth, health, success, and greatness, as well as rest, joy, love, connection, and lightness, even during challenging times. Hannah, thank you so much for being here. And I'm so happy to be here. What a beginning. I love that you dive straight in and we're talking about possibility. I'm like, this is going to be a great conversation. <laughs> yes. And so I, I want to know a, a little bit about how you grew up. A lot of times, you know, we look at people and we think, oh, they're successful and they just leaped into it without a life. <laughs> so, so how did you grow up? So, I mean, I'm, I'm like, well, how far back do I go? But I grew up in the UK, so I'm, I'm Spanish English. I'm, I'm bilingual and I was brought up by two teachers. Um, and I really, I really got into this work. You know, when you talk about leaping from a very different place, cause I was really struggling with, with mental health. I was a very good girl and I got very good grades and I kept myself very small and I didn't say too many things that could ruffle any feathers, you know? Um, I was a little bit of the weird child in my village because we were the only foreign family in the village. And so my mother was Spanish and I spoke a different language. Uh, I now realize that that was a blessing. But as a child, I was <laughs> embarrassed. Um, and, and I actually came into this work because of my own struggle, my own inner questioning, my own questioning of is this it, you know, from a very young age, because like most people, I had a very I'm going to use the word normal upbringing, right? Mm -hmm. Loving upbringing. But I was like, I don't know if you felt this, but from childhood, I felt there must be something more, right? Yes. Yes. Same with me. And, um, you know, I was a good girl too, but I was a good girl because there was a lot of abuse in, I, in my work. And I really want to talk in my life. I want to talk about your trauma work, but it was mm -hmm. like, keep your head down so you don't get hurt. Keep your mouth shut. Don't stir the pot. Um, but just by listening to you and feeling your energy, it was like something in you was calling you forward beyond the circumstances that you were born into. Yes. So it's interesting when we talk about the circumstances that I was born into, I come from a family of refugees. And that's very interesting when you talk about trauma and generational trauma, because we think that it ends when the war ends. And it doesn't. <laughs> and it doesn't. So um, 
And I was a very strange child for my family. Do you know the cartoon? I mean, I don't know if this is common in um, anywhere but Spanish speaking countries, but her name was Mafalda. Have you heard of Mafalda? No. No. So it was this little girl, right? And I want you to imagine this because she was wild. She was teeny, teeny, teeny weeny. And she had big curly hair. My hair grew up in curls up before it grew down, right? Which was also different for my family. And she was a child philosopher. And so my parents didn't quite know what to do with me because my sister was like, her chat would be like, what do you want for dinner, mum? You know, I like pizza. And my chat would be like, mum, have you thought about death and dying? Because you brought me to the world. And you haven't thought about this. Do you think that that's responsible? Like very small. <laughs> I've gone off and done this and they think it's surprising because it's not what people do in our family. But they also, you know, seeing me as a child, they kind of go, that makes sense. <laughs> you know, that's not too unusual for the behavior that you showed. But it wasn't until that I'd really looked at the stuff within my family. Right. The deep trauma the stuff that came from being a refugee family. You know, my father was born two years after the World War in Mm -hmm. the UK. They were a very loving family, but they weren't a very emotionally attuned family. Um, And so there's all of these different levels of trauma. It wasn't until I started looking at that, and I was blessed enough, and I use this language on purpose, to have a bit of a a wake-up call at 19 when I had an array of mental health diagnoses, which was basically the culmination of, the unresolved trauma. And I decided to look at it. And that was the start of my business journey. I just didn't realize it because it was going to happen maybe 10 years later. <laughs> well, you know, I, I believe that challenges and moments of awakening are, are portals of transformation. And I think a lot of the people that I interview, something happened <laughs> at mm-hmm. some point and that became the wake up call that became the, the the universe pulling you in a direction. And so so were you in therapy? Is it how did you explore? So I was studying so to give you the greater picture, and I always come back to this moment. And I've just written a chapter in the book about this this moment because it was very pivotal. It was three weeks time. I had three mental health diagnoses and my mother was diagnosed with cancer and that would become oh. her journey to her passing. I mean, my mother's lives were very um, intertwined. And so I was diagnosed with an array of mental health conditions. And I was told that my mother had had her face first breakdown at 19. And she was still on medication when she was, well, she was 56 when she passed. So until then. And at my 19-year-old brain, I was studying psychology as an undergrad. I was in my second year, maybe. I had um, maybe a year to go. And I was, even though I was a very good girl on the outside, I was rebellious in my thought and thinking and mind, you know, (laughs) like I was hard to tame that. And I looked and I said, okay, I could go the conventional route. And, And there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. I'm just saying that it was not my path, but I see where this ends and that's not where I want to be. And so I think challenge can either keep you stuck or it can be a launch pad for transformation, but there is a choice there. There is a choice as in, do I see the situation too big for me? Do I see it as something that's happening to me? Or do I lean into this and be like, what's the possibility in this? What is life actually trying to teach me? And it makes me smile because I was 19. That's very young, right? That's really young when I think back. But I I remember saying to myself, and I remember calling my dad. (laughs) And I was like, the audacity, but I did. I called my dad and I said, dad, I'm going to learn how to heal. And then I'm going to bring it to the world. And I had no idea what that meant. And so when I graduated, I had, you know, w- you know, the best grades in the uni. I was given all of these awards. They thought I was going to do a scholarship. And they were horrified when I said I bought a one way ticket to Australia and I'm going to go work as a, as a waitress. <laughs> OK, wait, 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 wait. OK. Why Australia? Why a waitress? No, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> You know, people want to know the, 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 how do you get from this to hitting a goal? You follow your nose. And sometimes your nose takes you on a weird route that everyone thinks is wrong, but you know it's right. I can't give you an answer. I can't yeah. give you an answer. I don't know. I felt like it. Well, you know what I love is that you just described my life. People are going, you're going to do what? And go where? Why? Oh, 
I don't know. I, you know, so I love it. But see, what I think is that that something like that, being that kind of person, it's not conscious, but it's like, it's like the universe saying, Hey, the world is your oyster. Go, just go. So I want to know about how you got into integrative healing. You know, I mean, uh, and I want to talk about the trauma work, but every, whether it's, whether it's trauma expert work or whether it's business, it's all integrative. And tell me how you got to that place. So we've got Hannah, about 21, in Australia, to about Hannah, 26. And I just threw myself into study. So I was waitressing, but the brilliant thing about that was that it wasn't a job that I had to take anything home to think about. You know, you go, you make cash. And so then you come back and you survive. And I didn't really care about anything else. So I studied nutrition. I got certified in holistic nutrition. I did another exam as a nutritionist. Um, and it just, they piled and piled and piled up. And when I was 23 and my mum was then told that she was terminal, I flew back and I became a full-time caretaker for three years. And in those three years, I realized something pivotal. And that's, we're told that if you eat well and you maybe meditate a little bit, that's newer, right? That you're going to be healthy. And I looked at my mum and I looked at myself and I was like, we sleep probably more than eight hours a night. You know, I'm a sleeper. I'll sleep up to 10. I mean, I'll sleep. I won't stop sleeping, you know, but we slept well. We ate well. We did all of the things that you're told that will keep you healthy and my mom was dying and actually I was g- developing chronic health problems, right? From the stress of being a full-time caregiver and not being well resourced. You know, I didn't have a support system. So then my studies went to trauma, energetic work, shamanism, you know, because I was in an extreme situation and it is a very different situation for a 23 year old to be going to hospitals, hospices and to my end of life care. It pushed me to study healing in a way that I don't think a lot of people do. And so when I came to this completion, this, you know, mum passed away and and that's another story. And I spent all of these years preparing all of this work. I went, ah, these modalities aren't meant to be taught in separation. They're meant to be taught together, right? And so then I was like, and and, and that was the big piece for me. And I I think healing and self-mastery is the same, you know, healing, is learning how to master the self. For me, it's unanimous with the same, you know, it's the same thing. And in business, it's also multifaceted and multi-layered. And so I think we've, we've grown up in a world where, you know, hospitals tend to specialize. And I'm not sure that's the right thing to do. I think we need to zoom out and see things together. And that's where you find transformation for someone in their personal life and in their business. So integrative is, all it means is that you unify one or more you know, modalities, one or more things in what I believe is a stronger system. That's all integrity things. Right. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, uh, I was shocked that doctors go to school for all this time and there's one semester on health and, and, um, uh, nutrition and stuff like that you know it's like because we are whole beings we're mental emotional physical spiritual beings why wouldn't you look at all aspects of that all right so i want to know you're taking care of mom now how did you decide first of all to go and create a business and did you know what you were doing oh cool does anyone does anyone (laughs) does anyone when they begin what a question no (laughs) I'm going to tell you the truth. And this is what my clients always say. Like I always try and give the honest truth because, you know, sometimes it's easy to make something, I don't know what it's not. I, I know now when I started, look, this was, this was the situation I was faced. I'd been waitressing and looking after children um, with disabilities because I specialized in that in a little bit when I was younger. But when you're dealing with a parent that is end of life, you never know when you're going to get a phone call from a doctor and you've got to be a place. So normal jobs aren't conducive to that. Right. You can't just be like, oh, so, you know, I've got to, you know, and, and I was very much like that. You know, you can probably tell this. I'm very intuitive. When my mum died, I knew she was going to die. I packed my bag, went to go stay with my mum, right? Because I knew, right? Two days, three days before, right? So that's very much how I lived my life then. I live my life now. I'm a bit more organized now. <laughs> um and so it, for me, it was really a solution to the problem of 
I want to survive financially, right? I want to be there for my mum. And I also want to have a grieving period where I can grieve, you know, without being rushed into anything. And so for me, the business started with that. You know, with the business, I was happy if I'd make a thousand euros to start with. I was like, this is incredible. I can't believe I get to do this. I just thought it was the best thing in the world. But then it snowballed and I realized, and then it became a question of, poten- of potential, right? And so it started with a lot of, you know, very big things to work through my journey, but then it became, and they're still challenge, but that I know how to deal with them in a different way now. But then it became a question of, okay, so I've gone from depressed to well, to well, to happy. And now there's all of these different levels that exist, right, of love in my relationship, right? Wealth. And and I mean, wealth as in like spare time, money, uh, a a, a, a job that gives me joy. And so then it became a journey. And this is when I talk about, you know, my dedication and is to life being a living prayer to expansion and experiencing the more that there is. And so in business, yeah, we see this in money, but, you know, in my relationship, we have an agreement of like, how can I experience more love with you? And there's always more. And there's always, you know, there's always better ways that I can show up and deeper levels within me. So business was a bit of a naive decision, if I'm honest, to start with. I was like, hopefully this will solve my problems. And it's now become, for me, one of the greatest things in my life because I transform because of my business. It's what I'm dedicated to. And actually on a deeper level, I think back to that little Hannah that was asking my mum <laughs> why she hadn't contemplated death at five years old. Um, it feels right. I feel like that's what that little girl wanted. So sometimes when we go back to our childhood and what we intuitively liked and felt, that can give us a little bit of a key to our soul's calling, you know, of which I yeah. believe this is. Yeah. So I, I just want to, you mentioned relationship, and I guess I just want to say to you, I love what you said about how can there be more love? How can we show more love? But you didn't come up from a demonstrative, you know, huggy, kissy family. So where did that come from? There was, there was love in my childhood. And I think it's fair, it's fair to say that, you know, my father, he was post war. So he loved in the way that he knew, well, he's still here. He's upstairs Mm -hmm. actually. He knows how to love. But I understand and I appreciate that now. And my mum was Spanish, so there is hugs and kisses. So mm-hmm. what I would say is that it's it's more of a parenting style that's unconscious, right? So I think that's what a lot of people have come from. It's not that our parents don't love us. It's not that our parents weren't trying to do the best with what they had, or I firmly believe that with my parents. It's that they had a lot of patterns and a lot of trauma that they didn't work through and they didn't see it. How have I been able to do that in my relationship? Me and my partner have agreements, right? The primary agreement is that we are self-responsible for our stuff, right? And we, I mean, he's a relationship coach. So he puts me through the ringer, you know? (laughs) Like, just let me get away with one, babe. Just one. I don't want to be responsible today. Can I be a slug on the floor? But <laughs> this is what he does as a job. Uh, and I think I actually picked that very well because he stretches me and he really invites me to always be greater than I'm being. So it's not that we don't get triggered and it's not that childhood stuff doesn't show up because that's unrealistic. It's the fact that we're aware when it does. Yes. And instead of it being a fight between us, we come together and look at it. And that's involved a lot of self-responsibility, decision, right, and work. We also have the context to the relationship is that when something comes up, it's not a bad thing. Like, you know, he'll say, you know, we're just going to slay another dragon. And we think that that's fun. In in my head, the dragon isn't a big, scary dragon. It's like a little baby cartoon and we're just going to bop it on the head. You know, it's like there's still this. um, And I want to emphasize that we've both done a lot of training on relationships, unconscious patterns in relationships. And that's what we that's what we've that's that's the context of our relationship. And that's what we agreed upon when we began the relationship. Well, yeah, what's beautiful about that is is that you're talking about entering into this relationship consciously 
and navigating it consciously. I mean, you know, that whole fairy tale thing about they're going to ride in on the horse and whisk you up and there's ne- and you're going to live happily ever after and there's never going to be any challenges, you know. So that would mean to me nobody grows. <laughs> so, so what you're talking about is growing together. I want to ask you about the School of Integrative Healing. How did you start it? You know, is what kind of programs is it? So it started in August of 2020, um, and it started off as a course, you know, going, taking people through the modalities. It is now very different to that. We have a whole school. We have an evergreen program. So you have a membership. I love people to have a bespoke healing journey because I truly believe that we're all different and we love to cater that to that. So I usually work with people for at least a year. Right. Within the school, you've got the option to do the normal school where you have access to all the business trainings. Right. All of the healing trainings and all of the different modalities and a support coach. And so you can tell the support coach, I think, you know, um, I need to work on my relationships right now. Uh, what materials, what resources are useful for me? We've also now got clients that are certified in our trauma healing modalities. And so they do practice sessions with the clients that are in the school. And then we've got a mastermind, which is for our people that are kind of six figures scaling to a million. That's more business. But you always, whether you're getting certified with us or whether you're you know, doing business with us, you always get access to all of the materials. I'm going to give a greater context to this. I'm not sure how you feel about astrology, but I'm a Virgo. I actually have very strong three Virgo placements (laughs) so (laughs) the whole school is it's really well set up as a training platform and it has loads of resources whether it's you know a, a podcast we have a private podcast where you can listen to energetics in the morning and rewire your unconscious mind or you know then we'll have like hypnotherapy sessions over here you know it's just it's an amalgamation of so many modalities, so many different practitioners and so many different perspectives and views uh, because I believe that different people will will resonate with the same message in different ways. Um, And so we really like to create that environment for for people to grow in that way. And I come from two two teachers, so my life looks different, but I'm still teaching. (laughs) Well, I love it. And I, I, I love that you're so innovative that, you know, because I think that that's what makes success is that an idea comes through and you follow that idea and then you see how it wants to bloom and blossom and be of higher service. Tell me how people find you. So we have a link, the school of integrative healing.com slash woman awakening. Okay. The school of integrative healing.com slash woman awakening. And there you can either join our free community and our free community is amazing. We've got free podcasts. You'll be the first in the know when we've got maybe a free event happening or something going on. Or if you're ready to dive into a course with me, we've got multidimensional business, which is a free course. You can grab that on that link as well. That course is really great for those of you guys that maybe don't resonate with the normal business message. And you're like, I want my spirituality and energetics, right, to also be part of business. That's for you. okay? but you want to have all the success and all the incredible things. But you also want it to nourish your soul, you know, yes, exactly. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> or if you, if you know that you want to work with me in some capacity, we have so many different offers. It's best to just click on the discovery call and you can speak to my team. That's the best place. Um, and they can answer all of your questions because I know when you're building your business or when you're even going for a big dream that might be different to where you've come from, you kind of want guidance. You want support. You want to know how to deal with the things that come up. You know, it's easy to speak here and say, oh, it's, you know, I went through this challenge and I made it to the side without having the tools and techniques. So we really train people in actually building this inner resilience and the tools and techniques that we can use, right, to turn these obstacles into a blessing. So any of those options are great for that. Well, it's wonderful, ladies. I hope you wrote down the link, but it's going to show up in the video anyway. So, uh, <laughs> so I hope you'll you'll check it out. I I asked the same last question of every 
uh, guest. This show is called Woman Awakening. What do you think is the most important thing about Women Awakening at this moment on the planet? I think it's extremely important because women have different qualities to men. And women awakening, for me, when I hear women awakening, it's women awakening to the power that they've always had inside. And for me, that's a balanced society, right, where you have men and women, women awaken. I also think that we're in a time of consciousness rising. And consciousness rising for me is the root solution to a lot of the problems that we're seeing on the planet. So we don't know what it's going to look like, but it's exciting that it's happening. Yes, couldn't agree with you more. Well, Hannah, I'm so happy to know you, to connect with you. Uh, uh, I'm sure you're a sister soul and um, uh, grateful for you being here with our ladies. Thank you so much. And I'm super grateful for everyone that's listened and for you creating this space for me to come and speak with you and meet you and meet everyone else. <laughs> awesome. Okay, ladies. So I say the same thing to you every time. This is your moment. This is the time for you to step up, step out, open to the infinite possibilities that are in the universe and follow. I love what Hannah said. Follow your nose. Follow that yes inside of you. You're here for a reason. You're here because you matter and you're here because people are waiting for the gifts that you deliver in your way. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so grateful for you, and I'll see you next time. (laughs) 